month's episode of the Rupus Core series, uh, the continuous online Rupus education program. So we thank you for taking the time uh, for this episode. Uh, I just want to take a moment and orientate uh, you to the control panel. So we will uh, go through some of the features of the control panel for you. So those boxes that you see on your screen, uh, you can adjust the size and you can move those around on your screen. Uh, there is one box for the uh, webcams that, that are on us, uh, the speakers. There's also the content, the slide presentations we will be showing you. And there is a question and answer box. Uh, that's the really the only engagement, the only interface we have. You can type in comments and questions there. And this is a great feature. There's another box there called uh, resources where you can download content, uh, our catalog, and some more information about the topic today. And then we have a speaker bio box which has contact information and information about today's speakers. So with that, I want to um, introduce this topic. Um, the topic this month is called uh, Size Matters. It's about edge work. We're going to define what that is, uh, really focusing on our Bigfoot Nano Polisher and other small tools for edge work. So this kind of a presentation takes a whole team effort. I'm Jason Rose from Rupus. I'm located at our Denver, Colorado uh, Bigfoot Academy in the United States. And with us also today is Fabrizio Gagliardi, uh, who is in Milan, Italy at our uh, sister facility in Milan, Italy. So say hello, Fabrizio. Hello, hello everybody and welcome to this new event, to this new webinar for the core series. Thank you for being there. Yes, so and with Fabrizio is uh, working some background controls is uh, Samantha Ashton. And then over working background controls in Denver with us here is our marketing manager, Dylan Von Kleist. Um, and uh, go ahead and say hello, Dylan. And you've got uh, a few polling questions for us. Yep. Here I am in the uh, the control center slash my office. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for attending. And uh, Jason's right, this is a huge team effort to put these on. And there's a lot of hours in the content development. And to help make these better, we want to ask our audience a few questions uh, before we get started. So if you will, uh, take a moment to answer these questions and uh, you can select there. So our first one is, is which of these tools do you currently own? So uh, there's all of our mini and edge work size tools. Um, you can check as many of those boxes as you want. And then in the uh, lower corner there, you're going to hit submit. And uh, we'll give that just a moment for you guys to fill that in. And I should mention, I'm looking at the attendee list and uh, we've got people from, gosh, everywhere. And we have hundreds of you. So um, pretty cool. It's very interesting to see all this. So we'll give it just a moment so I can see some answers coming in. Wow, okay. And we'll go ahead and we're gonna push to the audience. And those of you who haven't uh, haven't entered yet, you've got another poll coming up here. So, wow, so there's our uh, results. So we've got a lot of people who are uh, users of the uh, 75E. We got some 75 pneumatic users. I think uh, that's one of my favorites. We have a lot of long neck nano users in there. And uh, wow, so good. We've got a little bit of everything on here. And the LD30, TA50, uh, I would expect those to be or specialized. So the next question we'd have for the audience is, uh, if you own a Nano, which do you use it for most often? Which of these tasks? Polishing, sanding, or cleaning and scrubbing? And uh, you can select all that apply, but the things that you do most with it, if you only occasionally sand with it, don't, don't select that box. But if you do all these things all the time, or you do mostly polishing or mostly cleaning, I'm just interested to see how you guys are using the, uh, using the tool the most. So, and we'll give that just a moment while you uh, enter your answers. And I will remind you guys, as Jason mentioned, that Q&A box that's at the, uh, on the screen, you can enter the questions in at that at any time. Uh, Samantha and myself in the background will be answering those questions. And then some of the uh, questions that we think are good for everybody to hear the answer to, we will push uh, out to the entire audience at the end so Jason can address them. 
All right, so let's see what we've got in terms of nano usage. Polishing, everybody's polishing with it. A little bit of sanding and a little bit of cleaning and scrubbing. So interesting, interesting stuff. And this helps us craft future presentations so we can talk about specific topics based on what you guys are doing. But uh, that's it for me. So I'll be in the background answering your guys' questions and I will, uh, I'll hand the controls back over to Jason. Okay, thank you, Dylan. Uh, that's very insightful, those questions and uh, interesting answers. So what we'll be doing uh, with the content today is we're going to flow through the content with these perspectives on your screen. So first, we will define what we mean by edge work. Uh, then that will be followed by uh, a description of the nano features and benefits, you know, basically what the nano is and what it does. And um, after that, we'll go into specifically which nano to choose uh, and how you reconfigure the nano. It's a very, very flexible tool, does many, many different things, uh, but we'll show you how to reconfigure the tool to do those different things. And then we will have some video clips and we'll walk you through the different applications that nano is capable of doing. And um, nano is one of a family of edge work tools. So we have several others that we will describe and talk to you about. Uh, so most of them you already know, but we'll go through the family of edge work tools. And then finally, we will sum up the content with a sort of a deep dive and a careful look at the technique and the adjustments you can make while using the enamel, uh, using the nano uh, to get the best performance. So with that, I am going to hand this from uh, Denver over to Milan, and Fabrizio will take you through defining what edge work is. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jason. Uh, thank you, everybody, for answering the, those questions. Very interesting information for you, from you. Uh, one more request, one more task for our audience. If you can just send us a feedback on how is the quality of the sound, both from here and from the U.S., that can be helpful from, uh, for us. So what is edge work? What do we mean when we say edge work? Well, basically, any time that we are working on small areas, those are edge works. We we normally work on cars, some of their, them has big flat surfaces, sometimes they have very complicated shapes. So in this case, uh, with small cars or even with big cars, but very many times old uh, uh, classic cars, they have particular shapes that cannot be handled with standard tools. They need to be worked and uh, um, polished with specific tools. Um, so many times this can be challenging for the customers and uh, what we are now going to see is how can we get better results, how can we get out from our tools the best possible performances. Uh, um, so let's go and see how many kinds of edge works we have. Let's see if this works. No, it doesn't. Oh, thank you. So no, one, one more. Okay, uh, so we can have uh, the outside two inches. Outside two inches means uh, the exterior part of each panels, where we must be very careful because it's very easy to burn through the paint and to, uh, and to destroy the paint in those areas. So those are areas that need a particular attention and uh, we must be very careful. Uh, or raised in body lines. So all the areas where we have uh, uh, for example, in the middle of a big hood, many times we have some lines, we have some areas that we cannot uh, work normally. So we need some specific solutions again. Or curves and contours. I don't know why this doesn't work. Uh, it's, uh, it's strange, but anyway, Samantha is helping me. Curves and contours, especially on small cars. Again, we have many or the fenders or any, any area that have, has curves that we need to change our technique or even to change the tool we are using. A, B, C pillars, those are areas that are very small, very narrow, we must be careful not to bring any dirty, any dust, any compound on the rubber, so we need to be very careful. In those areas we will need 
some smaller tools. Headlights also are very small. Mirror housings, uh, painted door handles, all are examples where we need to downsize the, the, the dimension of the tool and the pads we are using. Uh, small or tight areas in general, they need some attention. So if we consider this Fiat 500 uh, and we uh, try to highlight all the areas that are considered edge works, then we will see that most of the car is actually made of uh, tight areas and edge works. So let's see the next the next slide where we see that uh, almost all the car is is uh, is, co is colored only a few parts like the center of the door the center of the um, of the hood is not colored all the rest is colored and we need to be careful on those areas um, now when we are facing this situation we have two possible strategies the first one is uh, okay let's just continue to use the same the very same tool that we have used for all the rest of the car so for the flat panels uh, this large path will make the operation less comfortable will make it less easy so many times the best possible strategy is just to change tool uh, and going to the smaller tool which is uh, we have seen it 75 nano uh, all the tools that have a smaller pad and can uh, work on specifically on these small areas uh, in this way we will be more effective uh, compared to a full-size random audio tool polisher, of course, using a smaller tool has a lot of advantages. We reduce the risks. Uh, be careful, we never can say you don't have risks. That, that is impossible to get. But of course, having smaller pads will make the tool uh, more uh, easy to control and uh, we can uh, change uh, the, the, the action and the, the grade of aggressivity on the surface more easily. Uh, we will have uh, the possibility to have smaller backing plates, but all the action will happen below the backing plate, where actually the action is happening, uh, not having too big um, orbits, stroke, that will help us to get a better control of the action. So this many times is the most efficient and effective approach. Then uh, there's one more thing to say. When we change the pad diameter, we change the action that we do. But this happens in different ways. When we have a random orbital, uh, we when we move uh, the the when we move the the uh, when we change from a bigger pad to a smaller pad then we make a, a more aggressive pad so with a random orbital tool <clears throat> no matter what's the size no matter what's the size of the orbit the smaller pad will concentrate the action of a, on a smaller area and in that area i will be more effective the, the very opposite happens with gear driven and rotary where we see that with a bigger pad we have a more aggressive action why because uh, these are both rotary main mainly rotary movements and so the lateral speed the higher the pad the higher the laser lateral speed and the higher the action that i make on the surface so uh, always keep this in mind smaller pad for random orbital is better is more aggressive bigger pads for gear driven and rotary will be more aggressive <clears throat> This said, we want to see the features of the nano tool. So I will give the line to Mr. Rose from, from Denver, and uh, we will see in a few minutes. Okay, thank you, Fabrizio. Uh, back to me in Denver. Uh, we just want to point out the features and the uh, benefits of the nano polisher, uh, starting with the basic fact that they're are, uh, it's a very, very flexible tool that does many different things. Uh, the polisher has the ability to actually change its movement. There is a rotary movement, a three millimeter random orbital movement. And the third option is a 12 millimeter, you know, Bigfoot large orbit uh, random orbital movement. And a lot of folks uh, call this polisher the hybrid. It's really 
uh, Rupus Nano Polisher. Uh, the hybrid speaks to its power platform and the ability to switch from battery to uh, corded. Uh, so you can have that option built into this tool. It's quite remarkable. And in addition to that, um, we've got features in this polisher uh, that include the spindle lock on the head of the tool. This uh, locks the gears so that you can change attachments. There's also an LED indicator that lights up three different colors and uh, tells you the health and the strength of the battery power. Uh, there is a speed dial, zero to five uh, speed settings there, as well as the uh, speed uh, switch lever here that uh, enables the soft start. It's a very, very ergonomic tool, uh, very, very lightweight. This um, 97 degree angle helps you get the right angle onto the polishing, polishing surface. Uh, there is a protective shield here, and uh, please uh, leave that on because that uh, actually protects the gear set uh, from impacting other parts of the car uh, and the counterweight assembly from flying around on, on other parts of the car. Uh, there is a high torque battery, uh, uh, high torque motor that um, whether you're in battery mode or plugged in uh, to power, uh, you get the same torque either way with the tool. So it's a very, very versatile tool. One of the main features is the ability to have one version of the Nano that is a long neck and the other that is a short neck. Uh, they have the same three movements from each of those tools, the rotary, the three millimeter, 12 millimeter. Uh, pad diameters are 40 millimeter and 70 millimeter. And uh, all, both of these tools can be battery or corded and the speed dial caps out at 5,000 orbits per minute. So as we mentioned, very, very versatile, very powerful tool that can be used on many different areas of the car. Um, and hold that thought because we have another section where we will go through these applications. Uh, here's a cute little picture. Um, and uh, I don't know if I'd be standing in front of that car with the lady driver there, but uh, that's quite interesting, cute little pic picture of the Nano on a Fiat. So with that, I will turn this right back over to Fabrizio in Milan, and he will talk to you about different ways to configure the Nano. Yeah, here we are. So um, let's see how to configure the Nano, how to choose it. First, we have two kinds of, uh, of Nano. The first uh, is the long neck, the second one is the short neck. So not big difference, only the dimensions. Uh, the first one uh, is more suitable for a two-hand application, so especially when we work with big objects, like a car, for example, uh, that's the best possible choice, because I will have a perfect control of the tool because two hands are working. Uh, the other one instead is more suitable for smaller options like boxes or two or, or objects that I will hand on uh, a hand and with the other hand I will be working in order to, uh, to polish it. And that's probably also why in the first poll we saw that uh, um, the vast majority of you have uh, a long neck one. But uh, anyway, uh, if we don't consider just the length, the rest is all the same. So the tools are the same, same motor, same, everything is the same, only changing the dimension of the neck. Um, let's see, we have also the possibility to buy two different, uh, two different formats. One is the kit, the deluxe kit, that's very convenient because when you buy it, you can open it and just uh, straight away start to work, um, start to polish, to sand, to do all the things that you can do with the Nano. So you have pads, you have compounds, you have the tool of course, you have batteries, everything that you need. Instead, uh, a few few time ago we created the Naked Nano, so the, the only the tool uh, that you can choose when you want to create your own kit. But normally people hold it because if they want, if they often change from probably polishing and then sending or 
polishing and then cleaning. They will keep one tool with the, the um, with the, with a polishing pad on it, and the other one ready with the brush, so they don't have to change every time the 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 the, the tool. They can use the same the two tools that are ready to to go. So this is uh, why we created the the Naked Nano. Mm, then we have also the possibility to use it with the cord or with the, the battery power. This is why we called it hybrid, because you can connect directly to the uh, supply. In, in that way, you will not need to remember about you know, placing the, the battery in the charge. And also the tool will be lighter because the, 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 the power supply is lighter than the battery. But on the other hand, of course, most of the people use the battery power because that's, uh, that's cordless. That's, uh, so you don't need, uh, you don't have cords when you're working and that's very convenient. Uh, remember that the battery will last about 30 minutes and it will take roughly 20 minutes to charge up. So theoretically, you never run out of battery. But even if the case, you forget to put the, the, the first battery under charge, you will anyway have the coded power. So you can use that and continue your job. Then we have uh, the possibility to change the movements. So this is a very unique tool because uh, we have seen we can have uh, the battery or the cord. You also can have different movements. You can have rotary movement, you can have a random orbital with 3 and 12 millimeters uh, stroke. How to change from one movement to the other? Well, the best way is starting turning off the tool. So remembering to turn off the tool or alternatively you can also decide uh, to remove the battery. That's even safer. Uh, the, the important thing is to remember that any time you change the movement, you must make sure that there will be no accidental turning on of, on of the tool. So it must prevent uh, that the, the, um, the tool starts to run. Also, there is in the kit, there is a wrench that's very useful to tight and untight the, the movement. The important thing is you don't need to over tighten the movements. So just finger. Your finger is, or that kind of pressure is enough. Uh, if you, uh, you know, it's a small tool, all the parts are small, they might be delicate. If, if you use this tool properly, it will never break. But if you do wrong things, then you might have trouble. So it's important first to remember to turn on, off definitely the, the tool. The second thing is to not over tighten the movements when you use it. Now there should be a video, so uh, the, the directors told me that it was running uh, automatically, right? So I don't see a lot. It's playing now. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, it's playing now, perfect. So this is how uh, to tight the rotary movement. Use the wrench, tight it, not too much, just very slightly, because then the movement itself will help it to, to tight. Now they're doing the same with the three millimeter stroke um, movement. This is uh, uh, also helping starting with the hands and then using the branch to tight up until the final position. As you can see, the tool has no battery, so this is the important thing. Very similar, almost the same when you need to tight the 12 millimeter. So it will be very easy to start with your hands. And then when it starts to be hard, you can use the wrench to finish the job. So very clear, it takes a few seconds. Uh, the first time you do it, it can take uh, probably some some minutes, but then it's just a question of seconds. We are now, okay, yeah. Good, so this was the end of my part, I think, right? So I will give the line to Mr. Rose from the US. Okay, thank you, Fabrizio. Uh, what we will do now, folks, is we will 
go right into some specifics about the nano applications. And uh, this is kind of a, it's a crazy busy chart on your screen, but I'll walk you through this quickly. The nano has the ability to have different backing plate options. So there is one specific backing plate that is configured for uh, sanding. And that is the one that has the uh, soft cushiony uh, backing plate there. There's another one that has the Velcro or hook and loop and the one inch size for polishing, as well as a two inch or 50 millimeter diameter with Velcro to attach uh, polishing pads. And when we look at those backing plates in synergy with the different um, attachments, uh, different movements, uh, there are some recommendations we can give you. First of all, in the rotary setting, with the sanding backing plate, the three millimeter orbit uh, backing plate, um, or sorry, the three, the 30 millimeter diameter. Uh, this is actually not recommended. Uh, as with a lot of our other tools, we simply don't recommend sanding in a rotary movement. Um, however, the two other uh, diameters are very good, or uh, sorry, one other diameter is very good with the rotary. Um, this one, the one inch, and then we simply don't recommend the larger backing plate for rotary setting. More on that later. Uh, moving to the three millimeter orbit, this is primarily for sanding, but it can also be uh, used for very poli you know, fine polishing in tight areas where you don't want a large offset. Uh, so the three millimeter is actually a very versatile adapter, sanding and micro polishing. The 12 millimeter large orbit uh, is ideal for polishing on edge work and polishing in tight areas using the either of the um, 30 millimeter or the 50 millimeter uh, backing plates. So the 12 millimeter with the polishing uh, backing plates is great. And we uh, simply don't uh, recommend that with the sanding backing plate. Uh, uh, in that in that function. So that walks you through the combination of backing plates and the different adapters. The Nano also has a series of brushes that come uh, in the kit, and these brushes can be put on the Nano to clean different areas of the car. So with the horsehair bristle brush, this is ideal for leather and vinyl interior surfaces, can also uh, be used in the rotary movement uh, can be used in the three millimeter movement as well. And then there's some uh, stiffer nylon bristle brushes, two options there, soft and hard. And those are for scrubbing on harder, uh, less delicate surfaces. Now, when it comes to the 12 millimeter uh, orbit, the random orbit adapter, we simply don't recommend those with the brushes. It's too big of a movement. And when you spray your cleaner, uh, it ends up uh, throwing cleaner, you know, all over the place. So we simply don't really recommend it. And um, there are exceptions to everything, but we're talking about the the best application of these adapters for the Nano. So when you are sanding with the three millimeter adapter on the Nano, there are some items that you'll need. You'll need the adapter itself. You'll need the sanding backing plate. Uh, you'll need the wrench to change this adapter on the Nano. Uh, there are PSA or sticky uh, sanding discs that you'll need. And then you'll need to choose the option of either battery or uh, corded power. And once you make the selection on those, then we can walk you through the actual application. And as you're sanding with the Nano, what you want to do is make sure you get this backing plate for the sanding function installed onto the nano polisher. Then we'll take our sanding medium. Included in the kit is the 2000 grit and the 3000 grit. Although on the marketplace, there are uh, other sanding grits available. These are typically called daisy discs, but it's a, a sticky uh, disc that you stick on the backing plate. You will select the polisher to the sanding speed, which is about three or four, and you'll mist on some water onto the surface, and you will apply the speed paddle on the 
nano polisher. So this is uh, doing a sanding fu function on the edge of a panel. And um, that walks you through how to sand with that, <clears throat> with that function on the nano. So next we will go to the 12 millimeter polishing uh, capability of the nano. With this application, you'll need some items. You'll need the 12 millimeter adapter itself. You'll need some backing plates. Uh, you'll need some pads and compounds, as well as the wrench and the battery and the cord uh, for the nano. So you'll need these items close by when you do this application for polishing. And we'll run a video on this as well. First, we will show you the polishing uh, with the 12 millimeter orbit using the smaller one inch diameter pad. And in this case, we are doing the ceramic and the yellow foam. And we are taking a moment to prime the pad, which like all of our systems, uh, you do need to pre-prime the pad and get it ready for the best performance. So we're taking a few seconds here to prime the pad. Once the pad is primed, then we will apply one pea size dot of polish, and this will be what we call the reload, and we will go into the area that we intend to polish. And this is actually a beautiful uh, reason for using the Nano, which is on the painted door handles of cars, uh, which typically can be very challenging with a full-size tool or a full-size pad, and this does it very easily and um, very well, very efficiently. With that, I'll show you the 12 millimeter orbit with uh, the wait, yeah, with the uh, <laughs> with the larger backing plate and the larger pad. And here we will put two pea-sized dots to prime the pad. Uh, same product, same uh, foam, but larger diameter. And we are do taking a few seconds here to really prime the pad. And the, the purpose of priming is just to get the liquid spreading over the surface of the foam evenly uh, to begin to warm up the foam and warm up the polish. And this helps the pad perform its best. Uh, it also helps the movement to be more efficient on the paint. Here we are setting the speed dial and we are going into this area that is ideal for this application of the 12 millimeter orbit with the, the larger uh, two inch pad. And there's many areas on a car where this could work very, very well. And it's probably one of the primary uses of the Nano in this function. We'll move on to rotary, which is actually one of my favorite uh, movements that the Nano produces. And if you're going to operate the Nano in the rotary function, you'll need these items. You'll need the actual rotary adapter, and you'll need the smaller one-inch backing plate, as well as an assortment of pads with the other items that we have talked about already. I uh, want to quickly point out that the rotary, as we mentioned before, with the two-inch diameter backing plate is simply not recommended. Uh, it is not recommended and not supported as a function for this tool. And the reason is simply because, um, as we're going to talk, oh, we did talk about that, the uh, pad diameters uh, with random orbital, when you get smaller and smaller, you actually get more aggressive. So scaling up to this size, they're scaling down to this size of a tool. Um, the rotational forces on the edge of the pad are simply too much and it stresses the gear set, stresses the motor. Uh, so the two inch diameter in the rotary mode is simply not recommended. Uh, additionally, if you try to put this two inch backing plate on the Nano, you'll find that you'll have difficulty because it will make contact with the shroud and it won't spin on completely uh, all the way to its base. So that is uh, our way of simply telling you that that's not recommended, so uh, don't do that. Um, next, we'll show you the um,
video clip of the rotary application, which should be running very shortly. There it is. Okay. So this is the nano and the rotary uh, function, and we have our, our yellow polishing foam with the ceramic polish. And again, we're taking uh, a few seconds here to prime that pad and get it good and uh, warmed up and also the polish spread evenly over the paint surface. We're going to reload with one pea-sized dot of polish. Um, one of the mistakes I see often is people just apply way too much polish on the pad and it ends up slinging, slinging product everywhere. Uh, but this is a great, very precise edge work tool in the rotary mode and it is probably one of the best capable movements that the tool can make. Um, so next we will go into scrubbing and with the scrubbing functions, you can pick one of the brush attachments and you put the rotary movement onto the tool and you can use a kind of cleaner that should be dedicated for the surface that you're cleaning. In this case, we are using a cleaner for vinyl and leather and we're using the horsehair brush on the Nano in the rotary setting, which actually does a fantastic job of cleaning dirt and grime into perforated edges and tight areas on the interior. Also available with the Nano is the scrubbing function with a stiffer nylon bristle brush. And this is great for cleaning plastic and rubber and vinyl. Uh, we're showing you on a large floor mat, uh, but we're showing you use, using the nylon bristle brush into uh, these grooves into the floor mat. Uh, so you can actually clean a floor mat inside the car, or outside the car, but you can get into tight areas and around, uh, you know, curves and contours on the floor mat very, very easily. So with that, we want to actually show you, in addition to the Nano, there's a family of Edgework tools, and we want to show you all of the, the tools that are we position as Edgework tools. So in addition to the Nano, we have our LHR75E, which is the electric version of our Mini. We have the LHR75, which is the pneumatic version of our Mini, which is an absolute fantastic Edgework tool. And then a newly introduced to the family of Edgework tools is the LTA 75, our triple action polisher, also a pneumatic tool. And all of these are just absolutely fantastic Edgework tools for doing headlights, hard to reach areas. And as Fabrizio mentioned earlier, the outer two inches of every panel on the car. So we have a lot of options for you. These Edgework tools, have um, different orbit sizes available. The, the two pneumatics are positioned with the 15 millimeter orbit and the electric mini is a 12 millimeter orbit. So all of them considered uh, Bigfoot, large throw polishers, but with a downsized diameter to give you lots of, con lots of control uh, for edge work. One thing I wanna point out is if you look at the bottom row there, the uh, maximum orbit speeds capable in these tools. Uh, the LHR 75E is 5,500 orbits, but the LHR 75, the air version of that tool is actually twice the speed. So that speed is really significantly boosted on that tool to compensate for um, the loss of energy once you apply you know, the pad to the surface. So uh, the speeds are different. Orbits are different, but they're all edge work tools and they work simply fantastic. With all of these edge work tools, we have a variety of pads available, uh, both foam, microfiber, and wool. And as you can see by this chart, the diameters, you can actually cross-reference those different type pad materials that are available for different diameters. One thing I want to point out is in the 100 millimeter diameter, uh, the four inch pad diameter, every one of our pads that we have is available in that diameter. And then as you get to the wool and the foam, um, all of those are available in the smaller diameters for the Nano. 
Uh, with that, we just want to give you a nice pretty shot of all the different assortment of pads that can be used with all of our tools. And to again point out that we have these pads available for the edge work tools that we just talked about. Uh, with that, I'm going to go into the subtle adjustments and technique that you can do to get the best performance out of the Nano. So I'm, I'm back to talking about the Nano, uh, but these concepts are true of all of our Nano, uh, all of our edge work tools. But the Nano specifically, if you look at your slide there, uh, we are showing foam pad compression. And this is a visual of how you can actually see downward pressure uh, as you apply it to the surface. So a lot of folks are asking the question, how much pressure do I put down? Well, the visual indicator for that is the compression of the foam pad that you're using. So full compression, which is on the right side of your screen, we simply don't recommend that. Uh, full compression of the foam, uh, which really is as much pressure as you can push down to fully compress that foam. Uh, if you operated the tool all the time in that mode of full compression, uh, you're stressing components, you're uh, stressing the gear set and putting a lot of stress on the motor. So we don't recommend this. The ideal foam compression is 50% or half of the pad. Uh, and then light compression uh, is okay too, uh, but you'll actually get the best defect removal and the best finishing if you operate the tool at 50% compression. With that, we will go into specific, um, very minute adjustments in technique. Uh, this is also included in our advanced um, technique module, uh, but this is a recommendation on how you actually use the tool. So in the random orbital movements for the Nano, generally what we're talking about is technique uh, that, that is recommended like this. So we break up technique into these four parts, the tool speed, which is actual tool you select on the dial, as well as um, downward pressure and arm speed is how fast you move the tool back and forth on the surface and pad angle is the angle of the pad to the painted surface. In addition to that, we talk about how much com compound to apply, which is a very important consideration for the Nano because as we downsize the tool and the pad diameter, uh, a lot of folks are putting way, way too much product. Uh, if you're slinging product, that is likely too much. And then we talk about cleaning the pad, which is also a performance uh, contributor, as well as SWA, which stands for a supplemental wetting agent uh, which is adding uh, lubrication or water while you're polishing. So here's our recommendation. In the random orbital mode, which is either three millimeter or 12 millimeter, we recommend that you uh, crank up the speed to somewhere between four and six. Uh, we wanna power through, we want that motor to be giving some motor speed to, to give enough force so that we can power through the rotation on tight areas. The other thing is, as I mentioned earlier, most uh, people are using the Nano with way too much pressure. So our recommendation is to back off and again, go to 50% uh, compression of the foam. <clears throat> then we want you to move the arms back in, the arm speed back and forth a little bit faster than you would normally do with a full size tool or a full size pad. So a little bit faster, because remember, as Fabrizio mentioned earlier, when we downsize pad diameter with a random orbital movement, we are now being more aggressive, all other things being the same. And then with pad angle, we simply want to try our best to be flat to the paint surface. And that is one of the advantage of using a smaller pad and a smaller tool is that you can do that. You can do that work completely flat pad uh, throughout the whole procedure. With compound, as I mentioned earlier, less is more. Uh, if you're slinging compound, that's too much. Pad cleaning, we want to clean pads frequently. If we load up with paint residue or compound residue, we lose performance. And then as far as using an SWA, it really depends on the paint type 
the situation you're in and the severity of the defects. I want to really point out one particular variable in this, that if you do one thing, it will have the most impact, and that is the amount of pressure you are applying in the random orbital mode. Too much pressure, you're stressing components and you're stalling the rotation, <clears throat> excuse me, the rotation, so you won't get the best performance. So apply that 50% and then stop at that pressure. Now, also with the random orbital, in curves and contours, and we're talking about a concave uh, curve, which is actually uh, this sort of shape. It's an inward curve. So what would be the technique that would get us the best performance in that kind of a concave curve? Well, it would be recommended like this. We would want to increase our tool speed a little bit more uh, because you will have more resistance on the edges of the outer edges of the pad. So we want to power through some rotation. Um, we also want to give a little bit more downward pressure to really plant that pad into the concave curve. Uh, we want to slow down our arm speed, um, actually give less passes, but a little bit slower. And then because of a curve or a contour, you might need to give a little more tilt of the pad uh, to keep the pad rotating through that curve. And then compound slightly more, uh, not so much that you're slinging compound everywhere, but we recommend you add a little bit more compound in a concave curve to add more lubrication, basically, so you don't, you don't dry buff in that area. And then, of course, clean the pad frequently and Using an SWA, spraying water will really depend on whether you're cutting or finishing on a sandy mark or not. And again, I'll point out the two main variables in this uh, application technique, and that is to really increase your tool speed and add a little bit of tilt uh, as you're in that curve or con contour. Uh, finally, we'll talk about rotary technique and how to best get the most performance out of the nano in the rotary mode, uh, we want to reduce our tool speed. And really, when you downsize pad diameter for a rotary application, uh, you're being less aggressive, all things considered, but it's still a rotational movement. So this is still, everything you know about rotary still exists, but now it's in a smaller diameter. So you want to have uh, light pressure, let the movement of the tool do the work, and you want to move your arm speed back and forth at slightly increased rate so that you're not leaving the tool in one place for very long. And then, as we said before, a flat pad is one of the big benefits of downsizing to a smaller tool, uh, so you want to do that even in this rotary mode. And... Uh, Use less compound, clean the pad, and whether you do an SWA will be really situational and depend on what you're doing. Uh, the main variable I want to point out in this whole slide is the tool speed to really, really think about in the rotary mode uh, going at a slow RPM. Fast RPM doesn't help you, and in fact, it might hurt you. On curves and contours for a rotary, uh, the one adjustment that we'll really focus on is keeping your pad really, really flat in the contours. Um, otherwise, we want to reduce tool speed and reduce pressure in that, you know, curvature so that you're not being too aggressive in that area. Um, and how about scrubbing with the brushes with Nano? What would be the recommended procedure for that? Well, compared to other tools and other ways of scrubbing, uh, we want to reduce the tool speed. Uh, we don't want to apply a lot of pressure, and we don't want to do um, a fast arm speed. So really control the tool with a slow amount of speed and a light pressure. And that's our recommendation for, for the uh, brushes. <clears throat> to summarize, uh, we've been talking about the Nano specifically, but all of our edge work tools. And the main point of this whole presentation 
is for edge work, you will get your best performance if you downsize the tool, downsize the pad diameter, you will have more control, better performance, and faster results. And in the random orbital setting specifically, this is the safest approach and um, requires a little bit more time and a little bit of technique to uh, get the best performance. Um, rotary offers the best control and the most precision. Uh, rotary is the movement that has a zero offset. It has no offset. So it is, in fact, the most precise and the best edge work approach with the nano possible. And then adjusting your technique while you're doing edge work, you can improve results in specific situations and applications. And that is the beauty of the Nano, is it's very, very flexible, very, very versatile. Um, so with that, we want you to um, take a look at this question. We're uh, winding up to the end of our presentation and we really wanna get your feedback um, and was this presentation helpful to you? Uh, was it uh, significantly helpful, helpful, a little helpful, uh, or you knew all this material and this wasn't very helpful at all? So please enter your uh, comments now, or sorry, uh, click on uh, what answer represents your uh, feeling the most, and then click on submit. And while we're doing that also, I would comment, uh, we have some questions staged up for you, Jason, and I'll push those out. But if uh, anybody else has any questions now, it'd be the time to enter them. I've been uh, in the background answering a lot of them for everybody, but uh, we'll start with a few while, uh, while people are entering those questions in. And uh, let's start with, actually, we had uh, Robert ask a question. I'll push this to the slide area for you, Jason. I want to know if he could use the Nano safely with an extension. I had a great answer there while I was on mute. Yeah, don't mute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, we appreciate that question because there is some items offered on the market that, uh, and this is one of them where there's uh, an extension that can be applied to the Nano. And I'll tell you that basically with all of the Rupus polishers, and this is a, this is a, 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 a stance and a position that we as a company have, with all of the polishers that we sell on the market and we engineer and design and offer to you as detailers, um, we pretty much recommend no modification of the tool in any way. So our company line here is that we recommend to use the tool as it's designed with the attachments that are provided in the kit and with the system. Um, if you put extensions on the Nano and you get good results, you get bad results, you uh, if you stress the tool, you don't stress the tool. All of that is really on you because we as a company, we did not validate the performance of using the Nano with an extension. So uh, it's really something that, you know, you take that risk on yourself, uh, but we're not saying it doesn't work. We're not saying it works. We're just saying it's a mod modification that we don't uh, support. Excellent. And so actually jumping off of Nano for a second, somebody had a question about compressor requirements for uh, the 75 pneumatic. How big of a compressor do they need to run the 75? Ah, and uh, thank you for asking that question because uh, that's an important consideration for that tool. And what most people look at is the tank size of the compressor and the pressure, the PSI of the compressor. Uh, both of those are important, but actually the most important parameter uh, for comp compressor capacity for that tool is the CFM, uh, which is the volume of air. So the tools recommended about 14 CFM, and that kind of rules out a lot of the small uh, portable contractors compressor uh, with, you know, the smaller tanks and the smaller horsepower uh, and smaller capabilities. So you really need sort of a medium to large. Uh, but again, if you're shopping for a compressor to drive that tool, the, the one parameter that you really want to look at 
is the volume offered by the compressor, and that is the CFM rating. Perfect. So uh, a couple other questions. We'll go through as many of these as we can today. Uh, we had a question, actually, how many batteries would you recommend if they plan to only use the tool cordless? And this is, a, I verified, this is in a professional setting. So uh, in their shop, how many batteries do you recommend they have? Well, if you're purchasing the Nano Kit, uh, it actually comes with as many batteries as you'll need for a continuous operation. So the kit comes with two batteries and a charger. Uh, the actual runtime under load for the tool is about 30 minutes and the recharge rate is about 20 minutes. So if you're doing the math, you can swap batteries every 25 minutes and actually run continuously. Good stuff. Uh, actually, this is actually a valuable question. One we get asked quite a bit is, uh, can they use the small wool pads, so the little uh, 30 millimeter wool pads in rotary mode on the Nano? Is that recommended? Absolutely. So uh, the wool pads in the rotary mode is actually a fantastic use of the Nano. Uh, does really, really well in tight areas and um, in, in areas where you want a zero offset with no orbit. And Wool pad, foam pad. Uh, the only one that we really don't recommend in that mode is the microfiber pad, which is why we don't have that diameter in microfiber. All right. And then, uh, actually, this is a new one for me. I haven't seen this question yet because we haven't ever really addressed it. But um, how do we clean the small pads? So I'm assuming nano size, the little tiny, tiny guys. Uh, they break very easily with air and a brush. And uh, I would agree, they, probably the air is a little aggressive. You blow it out gently, maybe reduce your PSI. The brush is almost bigger than the pad itself. Uh, uh -huh. So probably not the best tool there. But what would you recommend for pad cleaning? Well, I, I am a strong proponent of air cleaning pads, especially fiber pads. Uh, I would still use compressed air, but you can actually uh, have the blow gun a further distance away from the pad, which will apply less air pressure to that pad as you're cleaning it. Uh, but yeah, air pressure will clean them. Uh, and the brush actually might be uh, a little too aggressive sometimes, uh, especially because people apply too much pressure uh, behind the brush. But, you know, generally air or you can use the claw pad uh, tool and the brush. Just don't uh, put too much pressure down onto the pad. And, and those are way. Another way is to mist on some water um, and actually compress it on a microfiber towel. And that will absorb some liquid material out of the pad. That's another way to clean those small pads. Good. All right. And then this one actually came up from a number of people. Then I think you'll agree the biggest confusion comes with the name of the tool. It is the Bigfoot Nano with hybrid technology. So uh, they want to know what part of the tool is actually the hybrid part. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So the hybrid speaks to the power platform of the tool. The tool's name is Nano, um, but the hybrid power part is really the power platform. Uh, the hybrid is the ability to choose between battery and corded power, and that's the hybrid technology that we're referring to. And I would agree with you, Dylan. A lot of a lot of times, I hear people refer to the tool itself as the hybrid. You know, yeah, I use the hybrid. Um, it's really the Nano with hybrid technology. All right, we got lots of questions. We'll get to as many of these as we possibly can. Uh, I'm going to push a few good ones to you. Um, so we got pad cleaning. We already covered that. Um, actually this one I will address and I've, I've seen this, uh, a question asked a few times. So, um, heat with the nano, some people claim that the tool is running hot. You do have to, and Jason, if you want to hold your, your sample up there to the camera in a second, but there's vents on the side and I see a lot of people kind of choke the tool and block off all those vents. If you don't allow airflow through the motor, will get hot. So it's key to hold it in a way, um, or at least occasionally make sure that you're letting those vents open up so the motor can get some air. Otherwise it's a sealed uh, electric motor and there's a lot of obviously heat in there. And if it can't escape, it will uh, run a little hot. So make sure you are, um, you're allowing airflow through the tool. Another comment I would make on that, uh, Dylan, is the, um, as you mentioned, these are the, 
the the air vents that you were talking about. And if you hold a tool like this, it really restricts that flow and could, you know, contain heat. Uh, but another thing that will be build up heat is is heavy pressure. So if you're applying uh, more than 50% of the pad compression uh, or applying a lot of pressure, uh, thing you know the gear set, the motor, everything will heat up. So pressure is another variable to look at. All right, and then uh, this seems to be a common one. Anytime we do a presentation and we can address it again, is just pad durability. How long does it typically last? And you and I both know that's kind of depends on the use. But uh, if you want to speak to that a little, yeah. So along that uh, that question is a great one. And um, to help pads to last longer, if that's your objective, is you really need to be cleaning frequently and swapping out. If the pad is getting very very hot or warm. Uh, have have two, three, four nano pads at your disposal there ready for you to use. And as you're working around the panel uh, or the car, just when one pad heats up, put it down, grab a clean, cool pad. Uh, if you do that, all the pads in your set will all last longer. Uh, so high heat and building up heat over time will cause all pads to degrade. Um, including ours. So you just want to focus on keeping pads cool by swapping them out and keeping them clean because a dirty pad creates more pad drag, more resistance between the pad and the surface, and that will increase your heat as well. Um, what's All right. thing? I, th I think that's, I think that's the best recommendations on pad durability. Yep. All right, and then I'm going to give just one last one to you and uh, appreciate everybody all the questions and we try and get to as many of these as we possibly can. Also remind everybody that if you missed anything, I had a few questions to see some slides again. This whole presentation, if you were viewing it right now, will be emailed to you probably in about an hour or two after we're done as an on-demand that you can watch as many times and fast forward and rewind as you please. Um, so last question for today, rotary versus DA mode with edge work, especially better for finishing. So if you want to talk, we talked a little bit about recommendations for edge work, but talk cut versus finish and uh, preferred methods. Yeah, so um, comparing between rotary mode and the dual action random orbital mode, uh, both are very, very good at edge work. Obviously, as we mentioned before, rotary is the most precise with zero offset, it is the most precise. You can get right up to the edge and remove scratches and defects right on the edge of a panel. Um, a good, uh, oh, sorry, uh, answer the question here, Jason. So the, the comparison of cut, uh, you're obviously going to get slightly more defect removal at a faster rate with the rotary setting. Uh, so one of the scenarios that I see that works very well is a quick rotary cut on the edge of a panel, and then you can switch to the 12 millimeter random orbital and do a very fast, it really is one or two passes, quick swirl mark removal or hologram removal, and that gives you the ultimate premium finishing uh, result. So that's kind of the best of cut and finish is a hybrid approach. Um, although it will be paint dependent, there will be many times that the 12 millimeter orbit uh, for polishing will cut and finish extremely fast and extremely well, uh, but it really is paint dependent. So the, the softness of the paint or the hardness of the paint uh, will dictate the cut and the finishing ability in that scenario. Um, I hope that answered it. Yeah, I'd say you did. So um, on that, I'm going to, I'll, I'll take us out. And if you've got any parting comments, so um, I've been answering some other questions behind the scenes for you guys. And I apologize if I didn't get to all of them. We had, uh, we had a couple hundred people in for the presentation today. This is uh, by far our largest uh, core webinar. Yes. So, um, so if you do need to get in touch with us, there's the contact information uh, for both our global headquarters in Milan, the email, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and obviously website. Uh, as well as obviously our U.S. offices. So if you're located in uh, the North American market, uh, contact information for us here, um, any number of ways to reach us. Uh, as I mentioned, this presentation will be available as an on-demand. If you're in this, or even if you uh, aren't watching live and you were emailed this, you registered, you will get an on-demand copy. Um, and usually within a few weeks, we post them to our website as well. Um, and on that, 
I would just say uh, thank you. And Jason, any parting comments? Yeah, I just want to really thank you for taking the time to attend our uh, this particular episode of the, the Core Series webinar. And a uh, special thank you to Fabrizio and Samantha in Milan, Italy for contributing to the presentation as well. And um, thank you. And then, like, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Fabrizio. And I do want to give special credit to uh, the team. We have a technical team that contributes to the technical content in webinars. So um, kudos to uh, Todd Helm and uh, Fabrizio and Dylan Von Kleist and all the people that contribute to content. Uh, and again, just thank you for taking the time and we hope to see you on the next uh, episode of our core series webinars.